In 2003, Joshua Musioka passed away. His surviving family members were his wife, Regina, his firstborn son, Mwendo, who was eight years old, his secondborn son, Mutua, who was six years old, and his daughter, Mweni, who was four years old. They lived in a small mud house with two rooms. There was no electricity, plumbing, or running water. We can't remember that very well, very well because we were too young. This was a tremendously difficult time for Regina since she was pregnant with their fourth child. Musembi was born in April of 2004. There was no source of income for this family and food was scarce. Yet they had each other. Muendo remembers. We stay well with our mom and sharing some details, I said, showing us love, protecting us, going around and searching for us food. A few years later in 2008, their mother passed away after falling sick with tuberculosis and being in the hospital for six months. The children were orphaned and completely alone. There were a few relatives who tried to provide care for these children, but they were living in their own impoverished conditions. We used to go and hide ourselves in bushes. We refused to go in school because some of times we were fasting without eating anything. We did not sleep well because can you see the, the way a house is conditioned, what it is, looks like. Sometimes we fear because some people or animals they can attack us, so we are not able to, to sleep in. And also because of we had none like uniform. We used to go with torn clothes. Musembi, the youngest, became infested with jiggers. As the jiggers burrowed their way into his toes and fingers, they continued to multiply under his skin by laying more and more eggs. Without treatment, secondary infections from the jiggers, such as gangrene or tetanus, could have easily taken his life. In 2010, Chariot's program director, Crystal, was visiting Mumboni Children's Home. Her goal during the visit was simple, to assess at-risk children in the local community. During one of those assessments, Crystal picked up four children from school and walked to their home with them. Ashamed of their reality, it was evident to see that these children were leading her to a place they would rather not go. Their faces were strangely emotionless and they would not talk to her. As Crystal stepped into their tattered mud house, it was evident that they were living alone. The home was in shambles. There was no food, and they had no bedding. They were stealing food from their neighbor's farm so they would not starve. These four children ages 15, 13, 11, and six years of age were living alone and had been for a long time. It was very hard for us to live here after our parents and died. We had no shelter, food, and clothes. So we, we used to, to go to school wearing tan clothes. And sometimes we, we slept without eating anything. What does a hope-filled future look like for them? A mattress to sleep on? One meal? How is this done for children such as these who live in a community that is unable to support them? Soon afterwards, these four children's lives were unimaginably changed when they were admitted into Mboni Children's Home. They were provided with food, shelter, education, and most importantly, love. After you, we were admitted to Mboni Children's Home, the life changed because we are taught the word of God and we received Jesus Christ as our own Savior. When I was here at home, when I went to school, I was not performing well, but when I went, I went 
unborn children so I started improving on my maths. When Crystal returned to visit Mboni in 2011, these children were unrecognizable. They had grown significantly. Musembi no longer had jiggers, and they were all smiling and laughing. This year, Muendo began 10th grade. Mutua and Mweni are in 9th grade. Musembi is in 4th grade. And last year, he was number two in a class of nearly 50 children. They are dreaming about their future. Five years ago, they were not certain they would survive the next day. The life in Born Children's Home, it has been all the way well for us. With sponsors, the parents who are there, as have shown us love. Chariots for Hope exists to love, nurture, and provide for vulnerable and orphaned children by creating and sustaining holistically healthy children's homes. Chariots for Hope provides hope and opportunity to vulnerable and orphaned children so they develop into exemplary, impactful citizens and leaders. 10 homes, close to 1,000 children, and each one of them deserving a hope-filled future. God bless you so much for, for sponsoring us. And God be with you. Thank you.